Hey folks, John Peterson here, and today I want to talk to you about cleaning up your images. And more specifically, I want to talk to you and show you to not be intimidated by going into Photoshop. Now, I talk to a lot of folks on my photo workshops, and most everybody is using Lightroom. And Lightroom's come a long, long way in really improving its ability to develop an image to really great standards. But I tell you, the one thing that I still don't like to use in Lightroom is their removal tools. They do a spot removal tool and then they have an AI removal tool now in Lightroom that just came out with the latest version. Both of them are much better than what they used to be, but they're not as good as Photoshop. And so for all of my cleanup work that I do, I go into Photoshop and I want to show you how to do that and really encourage you to, to at least open up Photoshop and use it for this one particular purpose, even if you're completely happy with using Lightroom to do all of your color and sharpening and all of that kind of good stuff. Lightroom's a great tool, um, but I do love Photoshop and, and I won't give it up for an awful long time to come because of the finite control it can give me. You know, most pros I know that are really doing wonderful edits on photographs use Photoshop, and it's the ability to control the edits that we make. Lightroom's wonderful for quick, easy edits, but Photoshop is where you get the pro quality control over the types of edits and where they are in a photograph. And you know, I'm really um, particular about cleaning up my images. And I, cause I think any little distractions in an image take away from the subject or the story that I'm trying to convey through my photograph. And so I work to remove a lot of the visual noise that's, that's in photographs and really let my subject or my story shine through without a lot of clutter around it. And when I say I'm particular about cleaning up objects in my photograph, cleaning up distractions, here's an example of an image that I shot in the Columbia River Gorge, and I've circled all the distractions that I want to clean up. Now, I know this might look a little overwhelming and it might look like a lot of work, but with good tools and a little bit of practice, this goes extremely quickly. So those are all the things that I want to clean up and here is the finished image and what it looks like cleaned up. Yes, there's still a lot of stuff there, but I got rid of a lot of the distractions embedded in this image. So even this busy image looks a lot cleaner and my message and the subject comes through a lot better. So let's jump into the system and I really want to demystify for you what it's like to go from Lightroom to Photoshop and back to Lightroom. All right, here we are in Lightroom, and I've got this image that I want to work on to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So hopefully you all are familiar with this icon in Lightroom, which is the basically the eraser, the cleanup tool. And when I click on this, I've got three options. I've got a Band-Aid, which represents spot healing. I've got a stamp tool, and then I've got this removal, which is AI-powered generative remove tool in Lightroom. These work okay, but when I have a lot of details that I want to clean up in a photograph, they don't work very well. My other complaint with them is that they oftentimes sample from areas of the image that I don't want them to sample, and, and the correction does not look normal and natural. Likewise, um, the AI will generate a patch and it sometimes does not patch well enough and I can see these edits and photographs. So I want to show you how I work and how I can bring this into Photoshop and then back to Lightroom to make edits. Now the things that I want to edit for the sake of this video, if you look at these little bright 
spots. These are little baby barnacles. This is shot on the Oregon coast. And these are all fine and they're natural and, and normal. But what they do is because they're on the periphery of the subject and close to the edge of the frame, they subconsciously grab your attention. You may not, you may not consciously know that you're thinking about that, but there's these bright spots in the corner of your vision and they, and your brain is trying to rectify those. We always want to look at, we as humans always want to look at bright spots. And so eliminating things like this on the edge of the frame is important for the viewer to stay focused here on the bubbles, which is what I want them to look at. Likewise, the brightest part in this frame is probably this barnacle right here. And that really draws the attention and it's not critical to my photograph. So I want to make it go away. All right, folks, if you've never done this before, I really encourage you to try to open up a photograph from Lightroom into Photoshop and I'll show you what we're doing. So the first step, let's get out of the remove tool. So we're back here at the basic panel. If you right click anywhere in the image and go edit in Photoshop, the system will open this up in Photoshop. Also, if you want to use the menu bar, there's an edit in Adobe Photoshop. So either way you want to go right click or use the menu bar, open up this photograph in Photoshop and I'll show you what to do. Okay, here's the image opened up in Photoshop. And what I want you to do is look over here and notice that there is a band-aid. And if you click this small little down arrow next to the Band-Aid, you can see some removal options that we have. What I use here in my images is really the Spot Healing Brush Tool and the Remove Tool. Very similar to what we see in Lightroom, but I find that it works better and it's easier to use than what's programmed into Lightroom. Now the spot healing brush is wonderful for small little areas. And what spot healing does, it's, uh, it samples the pixels around the cursor where you clicked and it fills in that area with similar pixel tonal values. So color and tone, it fills it in based upon the surrounding areas. The remove tool is for larger removal items. So if you want to remove a big stick or a person or a building, sometimes the remove tool can be helpful. If you want to do just real quick removals, the spot healing brush is the way to go. Um, the action happens almost instantaneously with this remove tool because it's AI powered it tends to take longer to to remove objects but it is a little bit of a better job for removing larger pieces so let's go ahead and use the spot healing brush tool and if you want this is command j on the keyboard on a mac keyboard but what i will do is i will just size my cursor i use the bracket keys to just size my cursor and I start you removing small little intricate items with my cursor. You just use my mouse, draw around and it samples just the pixels right around the blemished area that I want to edit. And we're good to go. Do that, do that. And let's go get this white one that I did not like. And even just the spot healing brush tool, you see how easily and wonderfully it removed it and filled it in. I can't tell that an edit was done there. I might want to remove this. So let's just say we go through and we clean up this entire image. The thing that you need to do now to get back to Lightroom is simply go up to file and save not save as, not a copy, but just save. And what Photoshop will do is save a version of this, the Photoshop version of this, back into Lightroom for you to continue editing. 
So here you can see that Photoshop put a copy of that image back into Lightroom and the label of this is an edit PSD file versus the original which was the file name with just my camera's extension of RAF. So here's the original, here's the cleaned up version. Let me go back and do that again. Here's the original. Notice all the white spots. And, and even if you don't notice them consciously, I guarantee you will notice them subconsciously. And here are those spots removed. So very, very, very easy to do and very quick to do in Photoshop. All right, let's do one more example. This was shot up in the Olympic National Park. And there are a few things here that I don't like that I potentially want to remove to clean up the photo just a little bit. And granted, this is a really busy, really messy photograph, but if I can remove just a few things that don't add to what I'm trying to do photographically, I think it will help the overall image. So again, we right click, edit in Photoshop, and the image opens up in Photoshop. Now, with my spot healing brush selected, that's, that's J on the keyboard, or you can come over here to the menu bar, I wanna grab the remove tool and show you how this works. So again, this is for larger items, and what it does is it analyzes the image and creates a patch. Instead of just a sample and fill, this, this actually creates a patch that goes over the area of the image that you're selecting. So I want to increase my cursor size. What I want to do is get rid of this big log jam back here. So let me select all of this and you can see the pink overlay. This is just where I'm selecting. I want to get rid of that. And so I hold my left mouse button down as I'm painting. And when I let go, that signals start to the system and it starts doing it beautiful I can't tell that there was something there to begin with it cleans up the back of that image in Lightroom I tried this in Lightroom and the patch that was created was taken from down here somewhere and it just it did not look real did not look like a good blend and so for this I had to come into Photoshop so let's say I want to get rid of this one branch that's up here sticking out and over I can go ahead and do that. So again, hold down the left mouse button, draw over the object. When you let go, it'll activate the system and that branch is gone. Beautiful. Now I just want to do some small cleanup. So I'll grab my spot healing brush. I maybe want to get rid of a few of these bright rocks. Anything that's sort of bright that catches my eye, I tend to want to get rid of. There's a few things all over here. Just little bits. Um, even, even branches, the spot healing tool will do a nice job because I don't need a, a super great uh, sample when it's a messy area like this. So I can go through and just clean out bright things that I want to get rid of. And then when I'm done, all we have to do is go up to File, Save, and the system will save a copy back into Lightroom. And you can see here that now I have my image back in Lightroom and it's cleaned up. Now here's the last little tip I'll give you. If you don't want both of these copies visible like this, what you can do is select these images. If you want to do that, you right click and you go stacking, group into a stack. And what it will do is group all of those images into a stack such as this. You can see I've got two images here and if I want to expand the stack I can just click here and now I've got both of my images in the stack. All right, there you go. There's a quick and easy way to break out of Lightroom. And I really encourage you to do all you can to maybe move beyond Lightroom for cleaning up your images. Now, you know, I'm, I'm very particular about this. I'm very passionate about cleaning up images. Reducing visual noise helps the viewers of your photographs better appreciate your images. So if you share your images at all with anyone, 
I encourage you to give a lot of care and consideration to cleaning up unwanted elements, cleaning up visual distractions in your photographs so your subject can shine. All right, folks, if you like that, please feel free to click and subscribe down below. Leave a comment or a question if you have any. Other than that, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon. All right, bye-bye.